That's where we win right here. But on the field. But where we want to be at the end of the season starts with our mentality and our attention to detail today. When they leave Penn State, a person should be able to look at them and say, that's a guy that went through that program. He's special. Second year wide receivers coach Taylor Stubblefield makes his inaugural appearance on the Unrivaled podcast as Penn State gets set to take on Wisconsin for the first game of the 2021 season. Coach, first off, appreciate you taking the time out of your hectic schedule as it's the first official game week of the 2021 season. But what's different about this game week in 2021 than previous years? Well, first of all, I appreciate you having me on here. You know, uh, you guys probably don't know this. During our staff retreat, me and Mitch here, we roomed together. So we're kind of roommates right now. So uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, I mean, this week, it is uh, it is different because you do know – it's different than last year because you do know that uh, you're going to go into a hostile environment. Um you know that the the fans are going to be there. It's kind of what college football is is all about. In terms of your preparation, it's the same, right? You are uh, you have a routine. You have a routine in, in in which what you do on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and you and you stick with that routine. You can feel the excitement with the guys. I know that they're they're excited about uh, playing in general, but obviously playing in front of uh, some fans. More on the season in a moment. By the way, Coach Stubblefield's a much better golfer than I am, going back to the roommate conversation. But take me back to Yakima. Yeah. Yakima, Washington. That's where your roots are. How did Yakima shape you into who you are today? Uh, you know, Yakima is a very diverse um, um, culture. It's a very diverse community, which, uh, which is a good thing. You know, Yakima it comes from a Native American a tribe that's that's there in um, in Washington, and um, you know what? We we're a bunch of hard workers over there, uh, blue collar folk that um, appreciate uh, appreciate working for what they get. And so, um, you know, I lived in an area kind of out in the country. I had a horse growing up, had some uh, uh, apple orchard that, uh, you know, my dad would always, I always felt like me and my brother got the, literally the short end of the stick because my dad would prune it, but then me and my brother would have to pick up all the sticks. But what it did teach us is hard work, right? The, the little things matter, and, and we had to mow tons and tons and tons of, uh, of, of grass. So um, it's, it, it, shows, it shows me about uh, a lot of different cultures blending in together and, and, and working together. Um, and then it uh, showed me a, a lot about hard work and how, how, how important it is and why it is important and being able to do that if you want to be successful. So you're a horse guy. Did you ride horses back in the day? I, I, I did, but as you started getting busy, uh, it really just became a big dog for us. We fed it, pet it, watered it. Uh, but as we got busy in, in high school and stuff, the riding kind of – kind of fell by the wayside that's really cool I didn't know that about you horse guy back in the day uh, back in Yakima but who is coach Stubblefield off the football field today oh good question um you know uh, oh very good question um one I I, I want to try to be a uh, a role model and a and a a present parent for my son Jagger and so a lot of time I end up spending uh, a lot of my time outside of football, I'm spending with my son and trying to, um, you know, teach him, whether it be uh, going, to, going to his baseball game, teaching him how to throw, teaching him how to, how to you know, get a grounder or hit a, hit a, uh, hit a single. Uh, maybe it's going to the golf course. I do really enjoy golfing. I, I wish what you said was true about my <laughs> golf game. My golf game is an absolute mess, but it is fun because – you're finding a way to compete, whether it be with yourself or with others. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm typically a guy that's always competing in something. I'm always trying to be active, whether it be with my son or with, with friends um, or being around family. So that, that's kind of who I am outside of, outside of football. You mentioned your son, Jagger. And for those mm -hmm. that are around the Lash Football Complex on a daily basis, he is oftentimes out of the practice field with you playing catch. Yeah. Why is that time important? It's time. It's important because we, you know, 
one of the sacrifices that you make when you become a, a college coach, especially at this level, is some of the time that you get to spend with your family. And so, Coach Franklin, allowing your families to be here at practice, allowing my son to be here at, uh, at the facility, to be in meetings, to be in my office, to be at practice, to be able to see the guys working hard, to be able to see the structure, the discipline, to be able to see all of those things. It's very valuable for him to see at a very young age what it really takes to be a big time athlete. But it's even more than that of the structure, the discipline, the, you know, Coach Franklin talks about it quite all the time. When he brings the teams up, he says, eyes up, right? Eyes up. Being able to look uh, at, at someone who's speaking and giving them your, your attention as they are addressing the team. Those are lessons that he's able to learn by coming to practice. I, I remember when I was, um, my dad was a high school and football coach. And so I, I remember going to his basketball uh, practices all you know that was kind of like our babysitting was coming to his his basketball practices and the moment he spoke we had to pick up the ball there was no dribbling we had to so we had to be disciplined and in tuned with what was going on in practice so that we did not um you know that we did not distract from what he was trying to do and so Jagger being out here to see coach Franklin to see myself and the other coaches um you know he's able to pick up on these things that that will hopefully uh, carry over into his classroom and uh, and to uh, his teams. Jagger can obviously look up to multiple individuals within this program, including yourself. But when it comes to the wide receiver room, you also like to have those individuals over to your house for team dinner to really separate yourselves from football. What do you cherish about those moments? Uh, once again, it's it's um, it's an opportunity for him to see older. Um, males and and see them the way that they react to see the banter um, and also to you know say dang that I'm lucky to be able to see some of the guys that I get to watch on in the stadium on TV they're they're here at my house and to also to, for, for him to know that they are just normal guys as well um, it's been fun you know uh, Parker Washington he let them uh, he let Jagger beat him in Madden, um, which was, you know, Jagger act like he won the Super Bowl, but Parker clearly let him win. However, Jahan got his tail whooped by my son in a throwing contest uh, that we had at the house where they had a, a target, and it was the first one of five, and uh, Jahan did lose. Straight up, he lost. So Jagger is proud of that moment, uh, and he can, you know, he, he tries to banter as well. You can definitely uh, hold that one against Jahan for the rest of his life. You're talking about a, p a potential future draft pick in the NFL, one of the top returning wide receivers in the country. And, uh, hey, not a bad little note for Jagger to, no doubt. to have that on him. No doubt. Family is clearly important for this program. Coach Franklin emphasizes it all the time. There's sons, daughters, family members, wives, husbands constantly around this complex. You being in your second year, how have you embraced that mentality? Yeah, and, and you know, the first year here with it being COVID and all that kind of stuff and, the, and the, how we were separate, uh, in some regards, it was a little bit different the second year around uh, because I had been used to it being apart uh, for a lot of reasons. So it's just, it's really nice to be able to work with, with, with Coach Franklin and work for Coach Franklin who does value it and, and he knows that we got to get work done. We got to be organized. Uh, but to be able to have your families around is huge. When you are actually in your office or in a positional meeting room, what do you enjoy about the grind of being a Division One college football coach? Yeah, I, I think there's no doubt in my mind that the biggest thing that I enjoy about coaching college football is being around the players. Um, they come from so many different walks of life, so many different personalities. They, they, they teach you things. They teach you how to show compassion. They teach you how to have fun. Um, while you're teaching them how to handle adversity, to handle success, 
ways to present themselves. You know, Coach Franklin, um, you know, before our meetings, he before the start of meetings, we do quotes. We do a guy's got to stand up and, and present themselves as if they were presenting in front of a Fortune 500 CEO. And so um, that, without a doubt, is uh, is the the biggest benefit of being a, a college football coach is just being able to have the fellowship with the guys and the coaching staff as well. And then obviously next, you know, the, 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 the planning of a play that then, whether it be a big moment, a small moment, but a planning of a play, putting a game plan together, being a part of a game plan where you put in a play because you've studied, you've, you've, you've dissected the, the opponent, and then it works. Like you get you you get a you get some uh, big enjoyment out of that happening. For those listening on the podcast right now, you might hear some beeping in the background. We are on the patio of the Lash Football Complex. Got to take advantage of the nice weather here in Happy Valley while we can. Now switching gears to the wide receiver room specifically with game number one just a few days away. In your opinion, what's different about this year's wide receiver core? Uh, I think that they know that they can be special. Last year, um, you know, Jahan didn't, Jahan didn't know, you know, what to expect. He was hoping for a lot of things. Parker Washington was hoping to contribute. Keandre Lambert was hoping to be in the, in the rotation. Um, and, and I could go all the way down the list. All the guys were just hoping we could do something. And so I think that they now – know and expect that they can be big time players and a big time piece of of the game and so um i i I think mentally they're different um in some regards maybe higher expectations uh uh for for our group and uh we're embracing it we we, i think our guys are are confident they're going to be ready absolutely they're going to be ready to play um, and so I, I am, I'm fired up to see what they're going to do in these uh, next couple of days. We've all seen Jahan Dotson on TV. We've seen him out on the practice field, the plays that he's made. But you being his position coach, not many people get to spend as much time with him as you do. From your standpoint, what's the one thing that separates Jahan compared to other players in the country? Uh, he, you know what? He is he's sneaky competitive. Like, you really don't – when you first talk with him, when you first kind of are around him, you don't really realize how competitive he is. Um, but he hates to lose. Um, he, he, he does. And he, um, he is trying very, very hard to exude that type of mentality to the rest of the, rest of the group. And so, um, you know, he does come off laid back sometimes and just relax, chill, mellow. But uh, he has some dog in him, some fight where you can coach him hard when he, when, when, when he knows that he's not doing what he's supposed to do or not doing it to the level of our and his expectations. You can coach him hard, and, and, uh, and he will respond. With that said, then, in your opinion, having a leader like Jahan and Parker Washington, Keandre, the list goes on and on, what makes a successful season for the wide receiver position, Grim? You know, good question. Um, I don't necessarily – no, um, I don't know. I don't know if I can give a tangible, like, response. I know that we talk about the process. We, we, we talk about it like crazy. And if we perfect and really focus on the process of getting better, first uh, themselves, second as a unit, then third as an offense, and then obviously fourth as a team. It all works together, and we really, really focus on the process, and we get better. I think, um, I think we'll have a successful season. Let's end on this one. You being a former player, both at the Division One level and the professional level, and now a coach, yeah. you still have to have some game day rituals. So when we see you walk off that bus at Wisconsin, game number one on Fox, 11 a.m. Central, 12 Eastern, What's your pregame ritual nowadays as a coach? You know, as a player, I actually, right when we would come in and there would be that, you know, right when you come in the locker room and there's like that 24, 23 minutes left, as a player, I would go find a spot 
and I would close my eyes for about five minutes. I would lay on the ground and I would close my eyes for about four or five minutes. Um, now I really don't do that. I'll probably use the restroom, head out of the uh, locker room, and kind of just have a moment before the whole team comes out, and I'll kind of just soak it up a little bit. I'll kind of see the players when they come out. Um, but that's probably it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't have a certain thing pinned on my uh, <laughs> pants. I'm, I, I promise you I'm changing my underwear. My, my, I'm changing my socks. So I don't have anything like that. Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck to Thanks. you and your position room this year. Thanks. Appreciate it, Mitch.